I always believed that um, the environment plays a role how people feel at a workplace. There are lousy workplaces in the world. We see them on television every day. There are tough workplaces. There are huge workplaces. There are beautiful ones. In our industry, there are a lot of overdone ones. I have a theory, and when, I have, when I'm done with what I do here, we shall fighting the UI and the end user. I would like to write a book. When Software AG built a fantastic building in Darmstadt, they went down. When IBM built Amonk, they went down. When um, Apple built their first big building, they went down. I can continue with many companies. When SAP built Philadelphia, management left, company went down afterwards. Building office buildings is not our profession, is not what we are made for. But people get excited. Um, people start selecting the floor covers. <laughs> I still remember when we built the office building in Waldorf, Dietmar, uh, Hopp, Klaus Chira, and I, we were going and selecting um, bathroom appliances. <laughs> what the heck are we doing there? <laughs> and we couldn't, we couldn't uh, come to a conclusion because we, we <laughs> you cannot make this up. We had discussions about the performance on these devices. <laughs> when companies build large headquarters, and I make a prediction, there is something happening soon in the Bay Area, and it will be a circle. The circle will not be good for the company, is my prediction. Why? When the top of a company starts designing and thinking, and we have to be grander, we have to be more visible, we have to be outrageous, this is probably not the right way. I always appreciated the Microsoft campus in Redmond, close to Seattle. Independent buildings of different styles. It looks like a campus, it looks like a university. I really appreciate the Stanford campus. This is uh, high quality without being pompous. Uh, different styles, but all a little bit in the concept of the old mission, or modern, but decent. So when we, when we build SAP buildings, my personal number is D000002. There was a D000001. Um, and I lost the fight. <laughs> whether we should have um, open space, whether we should have uh, different uh, meeting rooms, interaction. We got, uh, I, no, we have press here, I cannot say that. <laughs> we got rooms for three people each. Uh, before we had rooms for more people in our first building, we were very happy there. Now we came, became bigger. Same architect, he's here, Thomas, somewhere, Thomas Vorfelder. Um, bigger, people isolated. Um, when SAP moved from the old building in the Daimlerstraße to the new headquarter, the first name was uh, Verwaltungs- und EVZ. <coughs> Entwicklungs- und Verwaltungszentrum. Vertriebszentrum, oder? How can you be excited? <laughs> People are not excited when something is great, big. 
actually they're scared. And there is a tendency that these buildings are taking over. Then comes sustainability. Somebody, probably in this room here, um, decided to put in automatic light switches. So if nobody moves, <laughs> the lights are going off. Since I have an affinity to bathrooms, I had this already, I go to a bathroom, the light comes off very late. Can you imagine? <laughs> the hallways are dark. People feel depressed, but nobody has the guts to say something. Is that waste of energy if we want to have a tiny little bit of Happiness is too much, just nice, nice looking. When we built um, the, um, the campus here for the HPI, um, I, was, I was glad that we got this property there and that we could develop something. And finally, we did this um, Nike-shaped building, which is now the the, the final and the, the head of the, the campus, of the HBI campus. Um, and we had long discussions um, with uh, Herr Meinl, uh, how much we spend in, in atmosphere, beauty. We have this hallway, well, this, this um, uh, entree, which goes up to the, uh, to the ceiling, to the roof. The light comes through. It's inspiring people. In Frankfurt, they took a tower down, university tower down, which was really one of the ugly ones in our university landscape. After a while, being here, not because I got this property 15 years ago from the uh, state of Brandenburg or the city, I don't know who was, the, probably Brandenburg was the seller. Um, I recommended it to SAP because of its beauty. The atmosphere here, when you look out, yes, driving is probably 10 minutes more than to something at the western parts of uh, Potsdam. But it's so beautiful. It is so attractive to walk along the lake here and think. And people should think here. They should innovate. They should probably do something radical. Uh, break out out of the mold we build ourselves and we sit inside and this is my whole theme. Anybody from the press here uh, misunderstood me several times when I said companies have to break out of the mold. It's very difficult for IBM to do this in Armonk. They know this, therefore Armonk is basically abandoned. Nobody there anymore. In a beautiful environment, there's a good chance, there's no guarantee, still the people. But there's a good chance that there is a positive atmosphere, an open atmosphere. And I think this we achieved. And thanks to the people inside, and thanks to you, Jürgen and Jens, um, you live this. You mentioned it, but you, you live it. You can see the people here. They have a slightly happier smile on their face than in some other places of SAP. Whether they program better, I don't know. This is history will, will uh, tell us that. But there is, there is some energy. There is some, isn't that karma? <laughs> there is something like this. People like it to come here. It's nothing against the, our headquarter in Waldorf. But I said SAP has to be in other places in the world. SAP has to be close to the 150,000 students of Potsdam and Berlin, 20,000 in Potsdam alone. It cannot be that we can't find right people there. And there's a high probability that some of the good ones don't want to move away from here. Berlin is attractive. Potsdam is a beautiful city. Not everybody wants to come to Waldorf. Nothing wrong with Waldorf. But this is different here. So I'm very happy what we achieved, um, um, what they 
achieved. I hope. Okay. Uh, I hope that um, when, when you look at this building, um, Bill said, uh, doesn't it look a little bit like uh, um, Frank Lloyd Wright? Doesn't it look a little bit like um, Bauhaus? I could say it looks like, could look like Iron Man. So Thomas, I don't know. Who is your greatest architect? Where is Thomas Vorfelder? Where's who is your greatest <coughs> architect? You? He's not there. Yeah, he's not answering. Okay, doesn't want to tell me who it is. <laughs> Probably it's Thomas, <laughs> <laughs> because he has built quite a few buildings for SAP. So thank you, Thomas, for the work you did here. Um, I hope that the spirit of this building spills over and influences the minds of the people who are working here. Um, it's not grand. Uh, it's not fancy. But it's, it feels good. It feels nice, simple, open, friendly, light in this beautiful setting. I always envied companies who could find these places in the world. And this place should be a special place. Software development is not manufacturing. Some leadership of SAP were totally wrong when they, a few years ago, proclaimed that software development should be organized like working in a factory. Working in a factory is repetition, repetitive work, following a schedule, following a program again and again and again with the highest possible precision. This is exactly the antithesis of what software development is. We have to think about this. We have to treat people differently. And we cannot talk about um, that we encourage people, but we endorse people, empower them in all these emp words. And then we treat them like probably normal office people, nothing against office people. They have to be there. But they don't have to innovate. They're also following orders and doing a kind of repetitive work. So we need communication. We need communication in various combinations. We tore all the walls down in Palo Alto, in our older offices in Palo Alto, and there's now an open space. And guess what? The people love it. It is not that they want to have their three-bedroom apartment <laughs> in the company. It is they, the young people want to be together. They want to be together in different combinations. Walking through the building, they want to ask other people, how are you doing? Are you making progress? Or do you come to the soccer game on Saturday? So we are communicative people. We want to interact with other people, whether it's professionally or privately. So thank you very much. Again, thank you to state, the state of Brandenburg and the city of Potsdam for all the support. Um, this is outstanding. The ease of uh, cooperation and collaboration, uh, all the support we got uh, all these years. Um, we gave a little bit back by becoming successful. So the HPI, we can say this today, how minor we are, pretty successful. We have produced quite a few very good uh, students, master and PhD and bachelor um, students all over the world. I had the pleasure that I had uh, my first master who became a multimillionaire because he went straight after the master to the US, uh, co-founded Instagram, and they went public with a billion. Oh, sold it to Facebook. Sold it to Facebook, yeah. Um, it's not easy to become a billionaire, but there is a chance. Um, and it's nothing wrong with that. So we, we are very proud what we achieved. And um, this is when an institution becomes successful, even more people come to this 
institution of high quality. So the whole system starts to develop upwards. Uh, the system gets better. The teachers have to get better. And the whole institution has the chance to improve. I left something out, and we are actually here to hear and work with regards to the SAP development. And I made a comment yesterday. I don't know. I have to do enter here, or I don't know why it disappeared. It timed out. That we change the world with the database we developed, SAP developed it. We did the research here in Waldorf, sorry, in, in Potsdam. Um, all of my PhD candidates, and you started very early, Jens, you were there in the first, in the first hour when, we, when I said I want to do one more time an enterprise software system, and let's start with the basics. And uh, seven and a half years later, we are still close to the database. We just moved up, and we are talking about application development now. And I want to spend five minutes on application development, a fundamental, which is different than what I taught, what I uh, thought in the last uh, 45 years. I mentioned this yesterday. Not everybody caught this. And I have a very simple application here. This is the chart of account. SST, this is the actual development version of the SAP production system. It is on HANA. And uh, I have a chart of account here, and I just rerun the chart of account. And you see it's a very simplistic list. It is a list of the 5,000 accounts SAP has in the chart of accounts. Two. Sorry, I don't know who. Oh, God. No, I'm going to go back, go back, go back. Where do I go back here? And I want to rerun it. Where is this? Just go back again. Go back again. Uh, I can't. It... Who put this in here? You put it in. No, I, I didn't put it in. No. It's not. Okay. And now? It's bike on there. Bike on? For yep. It's bike on there. Same. Okay. Okay. Again, I have to hit this here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen. A little bit faster than before it was fifteen. <laughs> uh, chart of accounts. Everybody has a chart of accounts. Otherwise, people could not um, book anything. And everybody has to book, whether in the administration, whether in the university. SAP has to keep books, so we all have to keep books. And these are the account numbers here. And uh, it's a long list. You can see it's a long list here, going down here, this list. These are all accounts SAP is using. So we are very uh, industrious people, Vanna that we put those accounts all in here, and it goes on and on and on. So it was 14 seconds. This is running on the superfast database HANA. This is programmed in a kind of object orientation. It, there is not much of an object here. It's it, the, the most primitive object you can imagine, but it's built this way. I have another alternative. And I just rerun it. It's the same chart of accounts, and I rerun it. One, two, three. Despite it is a hierarchy, it is much more complicated. It shows the hierarchy of the SAP chart of accounts. So this is what I can understand, because when I saw this, I couldn't even find an account in the SAP system to start testing. So I let the people build a decent chart of accounts. I apologize. I missed this 22 years ago that I didn't look that we built a decent chart of accounts. And somebody said, this is good enough um, for beginners. <laughs> now comes the professor. 
what, what is different here? It is much more complicated. It's a hierarchy. It's a much more complicated structure. Why is it three times, four times faster? I said yesterday, we sequentialize everything, what we do with the database, as much as possible. In this case, we run through sequentially through the accounts, all the accounts sequentially. That's two tables merge or join the two tables. We take the hierarchy, we flatten the hierarchy so that the hierarchy is also a sequential, has a sequential structure, and then we merge the two or join the two structures. This is how we have to program in the future. It is 100% across the theory and the um, notion of object orientation. Yes, now it is an object when it's on the screen. We humans work with objects. The computer works much better sequentially. Always did. For 45 years, we believed that our hierarchical structures, our object-oriented structures, should also be in the database. I built probably the first object-oriented database, 1970, for ICI, an object database, which still has some reminiscence in the system till the last version, probably EE, ECC6, not in the HANA world anymore. Um, who is interested in that um, can, can ask SAP, can ask SAP more. It is a huge cultural change. We have to retrain 20,000 developers in SAP, and we have to retrain even more in the world. For years, Dietmar and I and the others were running around. We built real-time systems by having direct access to data. And now the same guy, a little bit older, says, we have to solve real-time applications like give me the chart of accounts as quickly as possible so that I can find an account for posting. We built this with sequential processing techniques. Isn't that amazing? The other thing I wanted to mention is, so Germans are pretty good at database because Germans are good at <laughs> this, this. We're good at that. Order, precision, mathematics, empathy. Come on. <laughs> Is the, <laughs> my friend from Italy still here? Here. No, we, we have weaknesses. So the Northern Italians, we have weaknesses. Despite we were together for 400 years under the Romans, and together for another thousand years in the Holy Roman Empire of German nation. And we cannot live actually with, without Italian food, but we still in the empathy segment, <laughs> there's work to do. Um, <laughs> therefore, design is taking place where in Europe? Yes, there is some Swedish design. Yes, there is design in Germany, but most design is taking place in Italy. You want to have a car? Take an Italian designer. You want to have fashion? OK. Yes, yesterday I learned that even sunglasses and glasses are being designed in, uh, in Italy. So we, we are not that good. And we have a huge deficiency in comparison with the Americans. George, um, I don't know what it is. Germans in America for a while, they get totally Americanized. It is this combination of, I want to be lazy. I don't want to, for something easy, what, 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 simple, which should flow, I do not want to spend energy. It has to come. And I completely adopted this. I do not read the manual of a car anymore. The goddamn car has to come to me and has to tell me what to do. Not I read in a book 200 pages <laughs> what the car does and not do. So we have, to, we have to get a different feeling. The biggest weakness of SAP worldwide, and everybody, we talked about this in various combinations yesterday about it, is the user interaction. 
the young users, whether they are called the millennium users or whatsoever, the people under 30 do not want to work anymore the way SAP thought 1992 to dominate the design for enterprise applications. This is so many years ago, 22 years ago, in 98, we did a little remake of the SAP user interface. The American expression, we put lipstick on a pig. Um, in hindsight, is probably true. We, we, we color coded it and made it a little bit more attractive, but in, in the more remote areas, we made it even worse. A Baroque system, a system which pretends to be beautiful for a very simplistic uh, selection mask is, is overdone. People don't do this anymore. The people spend two hours a day or more on, on personal devices. This is what they do here. That this, is, this is dominating. <laughs> this is dominating the world. And if it's not this, then it's YouTube, Facebook, Google. Google, the master of simplistic design. Fast, extremely fast. So fast we can offer now with HANA. The UI, we have to relearn. That's hard. That's hard for us Germans. And it's hard for us Germans to, I can only verify this because I live uh, four months in the United States. Other German manufacturers have similar problems. Um, it is a hard fight to get into my living um, environment, my living, the, my, my, the houses I have in America, German appliances. They do not match the simplicity of American appliances. We still don't do this. Totally overdone. We can program. We can do everything. I don't name the brand names. We can do much more with the German appliances, but I need a book. I have to use my programmer's mind, and then I start doing something. <laughs> I program it that it cooks or heats up the coffee, the pizza. <laughs> Much more I don't do. What does an American designer do in this case? And I realized that already 20 years ago. GE, microwave. There is a button, cook and watch. <laughs> the, this is enticing. This is enticing. I put the pizza in, close the door, and say, what does the thing do? It starts, light goes on. The, the pizza starts crackling. Sap a little more. I'm done. The pizza comes out perfect. <laughs> Our brain is so well organized. The next time I knew it is exactly 40 seconds. <laughs> self learning, self programming, everything self. If I'm too lazy to hold my finger down for 40 seconds, fine, then grrr, I turn it and I have 40 seconds. This is American thinking. We think this is stupid. We, uh, we, can, we can do hours, minutes, seconds, probably a tenth of seconds, milliseconds. <laughs> and we can say we do this every day at a certain time or whatever. So I'm mocking, I'm, I'm making it up. Uh, Good quality. There's nothing wrong with the quality. There's nothing wrong with the actual uh, microwave functionality. Probably built better than anybody else in the world, if they are not all built in China anyway. Um, that is the other question. But we are too complicated. I talked to other German colleagues. They were upset when I told them that their user interface is uh, as lacks as much practicality than some of SAP. Now they turned it around. Many companies come when, they, when I meet them in, in, uh, uh, outside the business sphere. It's like, God 
damn it, your interface sucks. You will not believe how the people are running through the offices and yelling, my god, this SAP. I can only tell the SAP managers here and the colleagues of a supervisory board, listen to these customers. We made a promise yesterday, we changed that. We will do this with all the modern technology. We go with all these designs as quickly as possible to the cloud. The companies, you can sign up and test the system and please give us the feedback. Let the normal users test. Let the ones test who work only half time. Let the ones test, not the managers, not the project leaders who say, oh, we cannot say something negative to SAP, then they will uh, retaliate. No. Let the end users write the comments. This is great, then we feel good if we do something great. This is okay, no, oh, fine, it's okay. <laughs> this sucks, is also good, then we know we have to do something else. And you can use any other language. <laughs> it, is so no, it is so important for the future of SAP to have a user interface which is on par with the Facebookers with the Googlers, with the Yahoos, with the Ebays, and all the other ones. This is what they have done in the last 10 years to walk away from SAP. We had great 10 years in the 90s when we came and uh, won, basically took over the enterprise software market in the United States with our functionality, with our integration, with our power to finish something, make something finally happen. Um, and the UI was, okay, 20 years ago, not bad. We had a very good protocol, we were fast, which is part of the UI experience to be fast. And then we lost it. And then for many years we didn't, we knew we have to do something and we didn't do it because we thought it's too much work. Wrong, wrong answer. If we have to do something, we have to do it. That's for, for, for any company. You cannot postpone a change which has to happen for too long. It comes and hurts you. And it hurts you more and more and more. And then you have less and less energy to fight back. So this is the promise. We do this. We do it as quickly as possible. Vishal, under your leadership, um, discussions have to stop. I discuss and I'm upset every day because I find the bug or a misbehavior now with my using my American eyes, so I know I'm in the pain in the butt uh, with, with, with testing. I, I always had sticky fingers in testing, so people knew that when I touch something, uh, it breaks. <laughs> when I buy a television, it happened just uh, probably two months ago, a 4K television of one of the leading television manufacturers, and I got one of the first one in Berlin, two days and it broke. I didn't hit it. I didn't do something. I swear. I swear. I just, I just touched it with a remote control and it broke. So I have bad fingers. Um, we will do this. We will do this again, this word, in a non-disruptive fashion. We will continue with all the data, all the configurations you have done so far, and we carry them forward. And we give you one year to, or even more, but we think about one year, to move from the current UI to this UI. We don't want to leave anybody behind, but we have to move forward or this franchise is suffering. And then we all suffer together. You know this, some of your younger employees, users are telling you, I don't want this anymore. We have a big fight just in the Bay Area with a good partner of SAP where the users just say no, the CEO says he wants SAP for all the reasons, functionality and strategic reasons. The users say no, use the email you just wrote to me. We changed this and we need your help. Please give us the help back. Thanks to George and his team. George, is, uh, George Kimball is the head of the uh, School of Design Thinking at uh, Stanford University and I had the Honor to be there as a visiting professor, professor for two, um, two courses. Changed my mind how with design thinking, 
we can improve things far beyond what we thought is already the end of improvement, far beyond. Things were invented there like the mouse and other things in this environment of IDEO slash Stanford design thinking. Um, I always hope that you can help us a little bit, but we will give you a free ride in the cloud. You can test this or use it. If you can't use it because it's too complicated, we failed again. Thank you very much. Oh. You're, you're wondering why everybody here comes in a full outfit uh, and uh, I come in a sweater. It was a little bit late yesterday that I came home and I threw my jacket uh, in a corner and it's totally crumpled. <laughs> totally. Then I thought, oh, I have another one, only to figure out this is not the one. I left the other one uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, the Bay Area. I just came in on the weekend. So I was without a proper jacket. So it's not that I want to be the renegade. It was just out of uh, options. <laughs> Thank you very much.